Tori. I'm an aquarist at the official aquarium of Alabama and I'm here today to talk about this octopus and the experiment that we ran with her. Right now she's playing with a jar but as all octopuses are they are very intelligent animals so they need a lot of enrichment in their day-to-day -day lives. So when I came in I was an intern and I had a funding through the Mississippi Alabama Sea Grant Coercion and for my experiment with that internship, we decided to do an enrichment program. So enrichment can be anything from this jar, like she's doing now, to puzzles, toys, and mazes. For our experiment, we chose a maze. We had this octopus back in October, and back in October, she was a lot smaller than she is now. You can see her mantle is a little bigger now, but at the time, it was about the size of a golf ball. So that made jar opening a little too much of a problem. She's now opened the jar to get her hermit crab. So what project did you use? So we did this maze as an enrichment. So during the project, to keep it not stressful, this stayed open the whole time so she could leave at any time. But she would go in to find a hermit crab a lot like she did with this jar. It's one of her favorite treats. And with this maze, one of the things that we did to keep her engaged was, you can see it has these panels. The panels could be picked up and moved to rearrange the maze for her to keep her engaged the whole time. Now, the panels are see-through. They've got that opaqueness. So during the experiment, sometimes if she saw her hermit crab her treat here, instead of trying to solve the maze and go around, she would go under the panel. She would push it up here and shove her body through. Octopus are amazing. They can fit through anything that their beak can fit through, which is about the size of their eye. So back then she was pretty small and could make that fit. During the experiment, we did enrichment levels by how long she stayed in the maze and how often she was interacting with it while she was in there. Mazes had various complexities based on the turns that we had for it at the time. But she averaged in the experiment for about the entire hour once she got in there to interact with the maze. Even after she had found her treat, she would usually find her hermit crab very quick within the first five minutes and spend the rest of the time exploring, going down different tunnels that she didn't go down the first time, making sure she had found everything in the box and just hanging out in there. Which meant she did have a good interaction with that maze, with that item. Uh, she did slow down the longer we did the maze, so the longer it went on, the slower she was to go in it. But she never did, she always went in it. She never had a day where she chose not to interact with it. And once she got in, she did spend that full hour. So we did count it as good enrichment, a good enrichment activity. Uh, we're not doing the maze right now because she's not as interested in it within this new setup that she has. And of course, she has the jar, so we also just don't want to confuse her right now. So with the maze, said that she could push the panels mm -hmm. out. She's very strong. Octopuses are very strong for their size. And you saw how I could pick up that panel. She could do the same thing where she put her arm under and she kind of forced it up. So she'd push one end up. So there was that little gap that she could squeeze an arm through. Um, at the time, she could get maybe half of her body through. It was The scap was a little smaller than her beak size at the time. But she could pull her prize towards her and eat it through the gap that she had made and then later follow the rest of the maze to find the shell because she really liked them as a prize item. She'd take the shell back home with her after she completed her maze. So what have you learned in the process of this enrichment project with the octopus? Um, she's very interactive with people. Um, she would get very excited to do it. She learned very quickly what it was. So she's very smart. She recognizes us. So if she knew it was me when I would come over, she'd perk up if she saw me. She knew I was about to bring over the hermit crab in the maze. Um, and she causes less mischief when she has an enrichment going on. When she's not, she gets a little moody. And when you spend a lot of time with the animal, you can kind of pick up some of the subtle signs, like color flashing and such. Did you have an interest in octopus before you came? Jeez, I like all animals, so it was kind of across the board. I did. Um, it wasn't, I had to do it, but it was definitely, they're really cool animals. They have a lot going on with them. Um, and they're just, they're so different, you know? They look a lot different. 
the newer me, but they're still really smart. So it was very interesting to do it, and I was really excited to do it and have the opportunity. What about that first time that you introduced her to the maze? What was that first experience? She was really hesitant that first time, but to make it easier for her, that first time we only had a little panel. So it was one, one box deep. So when she went in, there was a panel blocking the further bits in there and just food. So we got her really used to the maze is good and it equals food very quickly. And even that first time, as soon as she got in there, she could feel under the panels. So her arms were still exploring around the areas that she couldn't get to. And she stayed in there for the full hour, even though it was a small box. Was there any point in time that you didn't put a hermit crab in there and she still had an interest? So we did, at the very beginning, try to use dead food. She wasn't very into it. Um, she would grab it and then she would leave. She wasn't ready to interact. It wasn't as fun for her. And so we made that call very early on that we were just going to use live food just to look at our data set to hold steady throughout. We didn't want a lot of changing variables because the maze itself was changing day to day. If you were to do this with another octopus, what would you change? Or what would you do differently? I'd like to try with the panels, they're opaque, so she can see through them and she could see that hermit crab. It'd be interesting to try it with blacked out so they wouldn't be able to see through, so they'd have to solve more of the maze line to see how they would work with that. Um, and maybe also a different top. At the time, we had to use electrical tape because this opening is very big right here that she would go into. And once again, anything that's the size of their beak, which is close to the size of their eye, they can fit through. So um, for the earlier attempts, we did have some escaping arms and her just thinking that maybe she would try to go outside of the maze and explore new uncharted areas. So maybe a more secure entrance and exit area. So what is some of the mischief that she causes when she doesn't have the enrichment? Uh, she'll grab you um, and pull aggressively. She does like to grab and tug naturally. She's very curious and she likes to touch. Um, she definitely will squirt you with water. Uh, repeatedly. And just. Has she ever tried to escape? No, so she can only survive a few minutes outside of water, but some species that go from typo to typo, like your giant Pacific, those are your escape artists, because naturally in the wild, they're used to moving out of bodies of water to different bodies of water. She's not. So looking at her right now, that eye is so red and the rest of her body is white, what does that tell you about her mood or what she's up to? There's a lot that I can't really tell, but in the back when she did this coloration when we were doing the maze, it was general, she's checking something out, she's unsure. So she can see the camera, so she doesn't know quite what that is. But of course, I don't know what all of her colors mean. There's plenty of stuff that we still need to learn about them. Now, what species is she? Is she a Gulf octopus? She's the Atlantic, so she's the octopus vulgaris, or the common octopus. And do you know how many of these are in the Gulf of Mexico, as far as species go? We have three species in the Gulf of Mexico, but there's over 300 species of octopus worldwide. And then, how can you tell the difference between a male and a female octopus? I know it's very tedious. So if you looked at her head on for mantle, back, eyes forward, and you counted from the right eye, three arms over, the very tip of the arm, if it's a boy, has no tentacles, has no suckers on it, whereas the girl will have suckers all the way to the tip of the arm. So does she get to do the maze at all anymore, or have we stopped since she's a little bit bigger? It goes in every now and again, but again, we're working with the jar more now that she's big enough to open a jar, and we don't want to confuse her. So she's got one kind of thing that she's working on at a time. We like to so think of her like a toddler, so we don't want to confuse her or get her overwhelmed. So is there anything else you'd like to add as we wrap up that you think people should know about the project and about Octopus? 
thought it was interesting to learn that all, all of your octopuses are venomous. So she is a venomous animal. Um, when she gets that hermit crab, she actually teases it, pulls it out, and bites it to envenenate it, to get it to paralyze before she eats it. So maybe not the best pet to have at home, but they are amazing animals to see in the wild. Would their venom affect a human? It would be mild. This, this species, the common octopus, is mild, so you may get a sore and you would have to go into the doctor if it didn't heal within a few days or if it still irritated you. Um, it could cause permanent skin discoloration or an ulcer. But that's in a reaction case, a severe reaction. Um, of course, you have your blue rings that everybody knows about in Australia. They're very, very venomous and they will kill you outright. Well, Tori, thank you so much for sharing the information and we're gonna let her finish up her snack and say adios.